Hello, I'm Justin, Marketing and Research Analyst with the Jessica Ball team at Remax Traders Unlimited, and we work with a variety of investor clients, and recently we've had several individuals who are new to investing in real estate who we have been helping through the process of evaluating potential rental properties. And so I'm going to do a series of videos talking about evaluating single family homes as an investment, evaluating duplexes as an investment, and then comparing investments as you make a decision in which investment to pursue. So this morning, um, I am going to be taking some information directly from the MLS on a home in Pekin, Illinois, just outside of Peoria, and putting it into our spreadsheet to evaluate it as a potential single family rental home. And so if you are interested in investing or evaluating investments, please reach out to our team, Jessica Ball team at 309-863-5045, or you can email us at jessicaball at remax.net. And we'd be happy to send you this spreadsheet and information so that you can evaluate your own investment properties. So the home that we are looking at in Pekin, Illinois, is a single family home. You'll see that I've input that information right here on the spreadsheet with the size of the property being 780 square feet. This really doesn't help in the calculations, it just helps us in the comparison process. This home is currently listed at $69,900. I use the Peoria and Tazewell County Tax Assessor's website by entering the address in to find out that the value of the land is $2,510. And we use that because we don't depreciate the land for tax purposes. And so we see that the actual cost of the building at the list price of $69,900 minus the land cost from the assessor's website is $67,390. Now that's before any negotiations, but for the purposes of evaluation, we're going to use that. For single family homes here in our area, we typically see that banks and other mortgage companies are requiring investors to put 20% down. So as we think about the cost of the home at $69,900, uh, we will be taking uh, a mortgage for 80% of that, or $55,920, and putting 20% down on this home, or $13,980. And as you use this spreadsheet, it does a lot of these calculations behind the scenes. So once you put the price of the home in, uh, it's automatically going to spit out the mortgage and uh, the cash investment down. The blue boxes here are areas that we encourage our clients to um tinker with or, or put information in to adjust the price uh, and, and the variables that go into the investment components. So again, for example, uh, in this scenario, I've put in that we're going to be seeking a 30-year mortgage at a 3.5% interest rate, which is probably a pretty reasonable interest rate for most banks here in the Peoria, Illinois area. Um, right now uh, in 2021 uh, on an investment property. <clears throat> I did some research on Zillow and a few other sites to see what homes in this area are renting for. Uh, and these homes are renting anywhere from seven dollars to $800 a month. So I used an average there and said $750 is what we will rent this home for uh, once we would purchase it. At $750 a month, the spreadsheet makes this calculation and you'll see we bring in $9,000 in rent a year. We make an assumption that there is 5% of the time that the home won't be rented, even though ideally uh, we would like to see this rented all 12 months of the year. So our effective rental income for the purposes of the spreadsheet again gets calculated here at $8,550. And you'll notice if I would change this to $775, all the calculations there change. And so you can run different scenarios to see what could be investment potential. But we'll stick with the $750 a month um, we estimate the taxes. Uh, the current tax rate in Pekin uh, is right here, again, from the um, assessor's website is where I got that information. And at our purchase price of $69,900, uh, the tax calculation will be $2,106 a year. I just used a sample estimate for property insurance at $475. Uh, for people who own multiple investment properties and may have a commercial uh, insurance package on, on several investment properties, this could be lower. Uh, if you want a very conservative, low deductible, um, highly insured 
uh, single family home, you may be looking at greater insurance, but you should talk with your insurance um, professional as, as we don't give financial advice uh, nor um, insurance advice there. Uh, we skip a few items here uh, for the purposes of taxes that you may want to write off in different areas, but we are assuming we're going to be self-managing this complex. If you're interested in off-site management or having a professional property management company manage your uh, rental property, you probably want to add in or estimate about 10% for that, and we'd be happy to make some referrals for good property managers. A lot of these other components of the formula come directly from bank requirements. So for repairs and maintenance, we always use 10% of the gross income uh, as an estimate for repairs and maintenance. Depending on exactly what services you pay for versus having your tenants pay for, uh, you may want to estimate different for utilities in there. I always use $200. If we were buying a, a single family rental in Peoria, I would use more because we have a variety of different fees and um, different tax components. Um, but generally, sewer is one of those items that we do not pass on directly to the tenants, but that we pay. So generally for the properties uh, that we own as rentals, our tenants are paying gas and electric through Ameren and are paying their water bill. And we generally are absorbing the cost of the sewer in our calculations. Uh, for our homes in Peoria, the garbage fee is part of the annual taxes, but depending on which area in central Illinois you're investing in, um, areas like Bartonville, you may see $10 a month uh, as a, a landlord expense or an expense that can be passed on to your tenant for things like garbage. So I use $200 here as an estimate. Uh, we have licenses and permits, which is something in, in other cases that I would put a line item in for. Uh, here in Pekin, there's a one-time $25 fee for registering a property as non-owner occupied for a landlord. In Peoria, it's $75 per year for each unit. And so in the case that this was a home in Peoria, you would see a $75 annual fee there. And the other line items that are here are supplies, lawns and groundkeeping and miscellaneous. Generally for single family homes, you can anticipate that your tenants as a part of their lease should be doing their own yard maintenance, um, their own snow plowing, their own mowing, uh, and all of these things that would be a part of it. And so I don't include anything additionally in there. So the spreadsheet has helped us calculate our total operating expenses at $3,681 a year. Again, all auto calculated in here and happening behind the scenes in the spreadsheet. Uh, this puts our net operating income um, from our original gross operating income at $4,869 a year. On our 30-year mortgage or bank note, uh, we will pay $3,013 between our um, total mortgage payments and so what would be the principal plus the interest from the bank. So we'll see that our cash flow on this home is $1,856 a year. Uh, we can add back in $1,056 that become our equity that we're building in there towards the principal. Uh, there is depreciation of $2,451 a year. This is a tax term about what deduction you can take against your profit based on uh, deductible uh, or the, the depreciation of the property over its um, useful lifetime of 27 and a half years. If you're buying a commercial property, this goes up to 39 and a half years, uh, right around that amount of time, but we depreciate homes over that shorter amount of time. So you'll see that our actual taxable net income, even though we made $1,856 in cash this year on it, is $461 after depreciation. And so we can reasonably expect this home will, uh, again, produce $1,856 in cash flow per year, uh, which equates to $154.66 per month uh, after all the annual fees are in there. The debt service coverage ratio, uh, as you use this spreadsheet, will change. And um, this is calculated at one62 uh, we have a note in here that anything above a 1.2 is healthy uh, and banks usually won't lend on anything less than 1.2. So banks want to know uh, that you're going to be making enough cash flow to cover uh, your mortgage and so the principal and interest payments. And so, uh, you know, if you see this closer to 1.2, it doesn't mean it's a good or bad deal. It's just uh, once you get over that 1.2 threshold, uh, again, the banks are really seeing that you are in a position 
to comfortably rent this property and make payments on that loan. We've seen some of these get as high as two uh, in our area for really great investment deals. Um, but generally, I'd say solid investments are right there in the 1.4 to 1.8 range. We put true cash flow on here as well. Um, if we assume that there's no maintenance costs or maybe you're doing the maintenance yourself uh, and including the equity that you're building, even though it's not cash in hand uh, and assuming that things are 100% are occupied. So we'll go back up here to the top of our spreadsheet. Again, this is a hybrid of spreadsheets that we've gathered over the years as tools to evaluate uh, our estimates. And we'll look at this ratio information right here. And so we see, again, the loan to value initially um, based on the mortgage was 80%. But what I really want to talk about is this cash flow on initial investment. So what is the cash on cash return that you are getting from putting in $13,980 and receiving in cash flow before taxes $1,856 over the course of the year or the $154.60 a month, you are getting a 13% cash flow or return on initial investment. And this is what makes uh, real estate investing a very popular cash flow tool, in particular here with homes in central Illinois where, where rents are fairly good and uh, the price of real estate is relatively low compared to areas um, across the United States. So again, uh, as we look at this home in Pekin, Illinois, uh, listed at $69,900 on the MLS, assuming that the potential rental income is uh, $750 a month and we have a 30-year loan term at 3.5%, then we will see a cash flow of 13%. I hope that you would join me in the next video where we will talk about evaluating a duplex using the same type of spreadsheet uh, to analyze the investment uh, and the cash flow on that investment. And then I'll be doing another video at the end of the series where we compare uh, looking at several different homes, uh, single family homes and a duplex to say, if we were going to be investing right now, uh, which of these homes should we buy as the best investment? For all of your real estate investment questions and needs, whether it is looking at a single family home, whether it's looking at a duplex, a small apartment building, large apartment building, land or commercial property, contact your local trusted realtors at the Jessica Ball team with Remax Traders Unlimited at 309-863-5045. Thank you.